Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make metallic timbers and sculpt them using delay and some other stuff. So here is a bass sound that I made without the effect and then I'll play it again with the effect. So here it is without. <laughs> Okay, and here it is with. Okay, so um, let's go back to the bass sound real quick just so we know what we're working with. This is a standard sine compression uh, type deal. I have a, a sine. I'm distorting it and running a bunch of notches around it, um, compressing the final product, putting it out, a little bit of noise in the chain somewhere. That's good. So typical sound compression, it's boring. I wouldn't use this sound straight up. I would do a lot of post-processing to get it to sound cool. But, um, so let's get into what this delay thing's actually doing. So let's enable this. So here's the uh, effects patch. Uh, normally I would, uh, so because this is uh, the bass sound here is originally in a patcher um, here, um, normally I would just include all this crap inside of here. Um, but and for the sake of keeping things isolated for the, this tutorial, I'll, I'll show it all here. So there's the major thing going on here is that we have a delay. And in the delay, we have um, a you know we have the time amount, uh, and then we have the level or the uh, the feedback level. And so by playing with these, if you turn off the tempo sync of the delay, and you just are working in the orders of milliseconds, which you can see up here, um, the, right now it's at 23.3, um, you can get metallic timbers. Uh, I don't know exactly why this is. I think it has something to do with um, when you get delays so. Um, with such small time values, they uh, destructively interfere in such a way that the non-harmonic phasing of it, um, I don't really know, it makes it sound metallic. That's all you need to worry about. So um, while I'm modulating these two parameters, the, the time and then the level uh, using these knobs, um, if you'll see here though, um, it's not one-to-one. -one, so the the time knob, when I have it all the way up to 100, it only goes up to about here. I have it at basically 60 milliseconds. Um, anything more than 60 milliseconds, and you can actually start to hear the individual uh, delay feedbacks. Uh, and so that's not what we're going for here. So anything below about 60 is where it, also, it still sounds like one cohesive um, sound. You can't hear the individual delays. Uh, so, uh, and I did that with the envelope controller. Uh, I'll go over that in a sec. Um, for the feedback, I have it, um, so zero I have at 50%, and then um, here it's going into the orange, 100% uh, here is about uh, 102, yeah, so 102% of um, the level. The, um, you want this level to be kind of high, but you don't want to be too high. Um, really, whatever delay plugin you're working with, you're going to have to just find the sweet spots on your own. Um, so if you're not using this Fruity Delay 3, then um, you'll have to do some experimenting. But you know that I encourage experimenting because that's what my channel is all about. So figure it out yourself. Um, the other important thing going on here, or two important things. One is that, so the, um, the actual feedback, like starting volume, um, well, I guess technically, I mean, it's the input volume, but this basically controls like how, how strong the, um, the delays are from the get-go, from the, the first initial delay. Um, I've turned that down a little because I, I find that having it too high makes it a little too aggressive. But again, experiment, figure out what works. But the other important thing is that um, this keep pitch button is enabled. So what this is doing is that uh, as, so as you move this around the time value, um, what happens is that you're, uh, it's all happening, the delays are happening in such, uh, and by delays I mean echoes, the echoes are happening in such quick succession to each other that it, they take on like a total character that um, you may not desire necessarily, especially as you're moving the value around. Um, I, and so when you click on keep pitch, it keeps them all the same pitch. Um, I don't know exactly what pitch it's keeping them to. I tried looking it up on the manual for this plugin and it wasn't very specific. Um, so I don't know how it chooses what to keep them at, um, but I don't really care. So it sounds kind of it sounds cool to have it enabled. But let's listen again with it disabled. So actually, here real quick, let's go with it enabled again. 
Let's disable it. It's going to sound a lot more pitch bendy, for lack of a better word. Um, so that sounds really cool too. And if that sound works better for what you're going for, then by all means, please do that. Um, but let's say you're using a different delay plugin that's not this, and it doesn't have this kind of keep pitch feature. Um, that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna show you another option. So we're gonna leave this off, close this. Um, oh, here, real quick, let me go over the envelope controller. Um, I've gone over this in, I think, my last video, at the very least, if not other ones too. But basically, um, each one of these articulators, uh, you can uh, um, assign their output value with respect to the, um, the global macros here. So for the first the time value, zero corresponds to zero, but 100% on the knob, on the macro knob corresponds to only the, this percentage of output. Um, and then for the Y uh, macro, I have um, this kind of curve. So uh, yeah, and that's controlling that. But anyways, um, so let's say we have, you know, this keep pitch off. We're gonna take a uh, picture, in, in FL it's called, we, um, they have a, plugin called Pitcher. Yeah, Pitcher, here it is. And it's basically like auto-tune. Uh, you feed it in an input sound, a tonal sound. I mean, it doesn't have to be tonal. You can actually get some really cool effects when you auto-tune a not tonal sound. But anyways, um, it try it detects the pitch of whatever's coming into it. On, and, um, and in real time, it corrects it to an output pitch. Um, you can set it up here such that it only outputs to like a certain note. So if I only wanted to output to C, I just disable all these and it'll only go to C. Uh, or if I enable F sharp too. This probably isn't the best example because the this is all really low register stuff, but um, if you were to take a sine wave and pitch it up and down and have it um, and just have it going woo 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 and then run it through one of these it'll sound like beep 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 um so what you can uh, what you could do to actually use this in a musical context is just change this to the scale that your track is in uh so if my track is in g minor boom now it'll um all the all the i guess tonal stuff coming out of here will be corrected to uh the closest note that's in uh g minor um, so however you want to do that is up to you. Um, you, I don't know, whatever DAW you're using, it hopefully has something like this. Um, there's probably some free ones out there. Uh, in fact, I know there are. There's one called, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, I've been using one called Pitch Proof lately. Um, I don't know if it can actually do real-time correction. I think it can. Um, I mostly just use it for live repitching, but th there's, there's plenty of crap you can use. Um, you'll find something. And so by doing this, you can also control the tonality of how this comes out. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much that. Here, let's uh, so let's yeah, let's just say we're doing G minor, and let's listen to this again. Personally, I like the way it sounds better with the keep pitch, um, or even just without either the keep pitch or this pitcher, just kind of the, the bendy woo kind of thing. Um, it has a formant, it, it can account for formant here. That sounds a lot better, actually. So, yeah, um, pretty simple trick, uh, not much to it. I uh, hope you learned something from it. Um, oh, 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 wait, real quick. Also, um, one other thing I did is I low passed the dry signal. Um, and by doing that, you get more of that kind of metallic timber shining through. You can choose however, how much or how little of the dry signal you let through just based off how your sound is. Um, and then here at the end is just a limiter. Um, so yeah, so now I think that's everything. Um, I think I've covered it all. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments uh, or shoot me a message. Happy to answer them. Uh, if you have any suggestions for other topics you'd like me to cover, 
uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, and all that other bullshit. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you. Have a nice day.